Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to day eight of my 30 favorite albums of my high school years. That's right, it's back to school month. Here in September 2022, 30 days in September, my 30 favorite albums that I listened to from my high school years, which were 1980 to 1984, right? My age is uh, 14 through 18. I'm asking everybody to play along this month. So pick out your last four years of school before, you know, you went on to college or university or in the military or out into the workforce, right? Your last four years of school there. And uh, what were your favorite albums then? Whatever those years might be. Could have been the last four years. Could have been the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, whenever. All right? Asking everybody to go back in time. Think of what were the albums that you listened to, the 30 albums that you listened to the most that really made an impact on you in those last four years of school. That's what I've done here this month. Kind of tough because there were a lot of albums that I really got into, but, uh, you know, I've been formulating my list all month, taking things out, putting things in, right? We've already got seven episodes in the bank. Here's number eight. This particular album by a band that I was already listening to. Uh, when I got this album in 1981, when it was released, in fact, it was released on February 12th, 1981, to be exact. Um, I was already into this band. I had their live album, loved it, but this album really kind of put them over to the top for me and really made me a fan and made me say, all right, now it's time to go back and get all those other albums. Because, you know, the live album had a good representation of a lot of their best songs, but... Uh, Produced by Terry Brown for the Anthem label. Of course, we're talking about Moving Pictures by Rush. Uh, yeah, I mean, I listened to this a ton in my four years of school. Still really enjoy listening to it. You know, we, we've talked a lot here on the channel on various shows, either on Hudson Valley Squares or in the prog seat, about how when you were a kid and this album came out, at least a lot of the people that I know knew and myself... And as it turns out, a lot of people I didn't know back then who I know now, uh, the, the side one of this album really, really front loaded with some great songs and a couple radio tracks. And we kind of like, in a, in a way, we liked side two, but I, that was never, you know, for me anyway, I didn't play side two nearly as much as side one. I mean, you know, you got Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, YYZ or YYZ, and uh, Limelight. I mean, four songs right there, all four of those songs you would hear on local rock radio stations at the time. They played those songs live all the time. Then on side two, you got the Camera Eye, the lengthy Camera Eye. They're a little mini epic for, well, I don't know how mini it is, 10 minute song, right? Uh, on this album, Witch Hunt, which I love Witch Hunt. And Vital Signs. Vital Signs is this quirky kind of little uh, prog meets reggae little number, right? That's at the very, very back of the album, which, you know, back in the day, I was not a fan of Vital Signs at all. That's like the one song in this album that I kind of usually skip by the time Witch Hunt was over, and I love Witch Hunt because it's dark, doomy, heavy. Uh, Vital Signs, I was like, okay, psh, that's it. Let's go back to the beginning. And that's what I would do. Play this over and over and over again. But Vital Signs, generally speaking, didn't really like much. Today, however, uh, I love Vital Signs. To me, Vital Signs is really fresh. And vital, for me, Vital Signs and Camera Eye are the songs that I really enjoy hearing the most nowadays because I think those are the, the two songs on the album that I kind of, you know, didn't play as much as the other ones. They, they you know, not songs that they played live. You didn't hear them on the radio, right? So, uh, but yeah, such a great album. Amazing production on this album. Really, really great. And I remember just, like, as a kid, sitting there with the, with the vinyl, the LP, and just, you know, pouring over the uh, the visual imagery on the front and back. And, you know, and at the time, like I said, I didn't start getting the other, the previous albums, because I already had All the World to Stage. I didn't get the previous albums till after I got this. So when I first got them looking at this, and I'm like, oh, wow, it's interesting. And, you know, all the little kind of references to all sorts of things, Rush and whatnot. And then, you know, the next live album came out and that he had even more references to this album and all the other albums. So very, very cool uh, artwork to look over. But I, I really liked the, um, the accessibility of this album. It was still kind of heavy and intricate like Rush always is. But man, these songs just kind of pulled you in. And Alex Lifeson's guitar work on the album and the bass playing from Getty, Neil's drumming. I mean, it's just Rush for me was always the total package. And I always liked Getty's voice because to me it was something different. And I think it matched the music. I, you know, looking back, can you imagine Rush with any other kind of vocals? I can't. Uh, and who knew all, you know, back then that all these years later we would actually get a reissue of this album. 
right? A remaster that has a bonus live show from that tour from 1981 uh, that turns out could possibly be the greatest Rush Live album of all time. I mean, right? It's just amazing to think about that. Uh, and, you know, I, I also, when they first started doing these Rush, Rush reissues, I was, I was a little annoyed that the, you know, the artwork they specifically wanted to make different than the original album covers, although they're kind of, you know, using similar themes. Uh, but now that I, you know, now that I think about it, I kind of, kind of, I kind of like that they did that because now it's like, well, can't get rid of this, so I got to keep both, right? So it's another excuse to have multiple copies of a classic album, right? So uh, yeah, and how about I, I absolutely love that live shot right there, and then there you have from the original album, Alex looking like in slow motion, get ready to spring up, you know. But yeah, moving pictures for me, just uh, an absolute game changer. Made me an enormous Rush fan. I was already a fan. This made me a bigger fan and made me uh, really want to go dive into all of the uh, albums before it, you know, to hear all those songs that weren't on the live album and uh, get into them even more. So, yeah, uh, everybody I knew liked this album back in the day. Everybody. So this was, this made, you know, in my neck of the woods in New York, this made Rush a, you know, really, they were already becoming a big band. Moving Pictures made them a huge band. I saw them on this tour, and uh, yeah, just mind blown. So uh, that is my pick for today. Uh, it be interesting to see, for those of you who were in high school around that time, 1981 was in your four years of school, what you think of, uh, per uh, I was going to say Permanent Waves, no, Moving Pictures. And... Uh, but most importantly, what is your pick for today? This is day eight, so we've got lots more of these coming up, right? We're going to go through the entire month, so uh, stay tuned for much, much more. And uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together, all the damn time. Please uh, hit that like button before you go. Very, very important. And also uh, click on that notification bell if you're a subscriber. This way you get uh, notified of all of our content as it posts each and every day. So uh, thanks for watching. Also down below we have the link to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations as well as our merch page uh, where you can take advantage of some uh, specials that are going on now. Four of our most popular uh, shirt designs, t-shirt designs, are now available on Amazon at a greatly uh, reduced uh, rates, big discount going on right now. So if you want to uh, click on that link below, head on over. There's a link directly to our little page on Amazon, which has those four shirts. So go take advantage of that and uh, we'll ship them right out to you. So thanks for watching everybody. I am P. Pardo. We'll see you tomorrow for day nine here on uh, Back to School Month, my 30 favorite albums from my high school years, 1980 to 1984. We'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.